What's going on guys? We are going to talk about the mailbox lock C9300s. These are 401B replacements. That's the number that the mailbox manufacturers use. 401B means the particular setup of that style of lock. This style of lock is very different compared to what most people know of mailbox locks. This is a very common one nowadays it says USPS 1172. We sell these in abundance, but there is uh, several different versions of that and several different copies. However, most new mailbox nowadays use the 1172C. It's the C9100 mailbox. Now we are gonna talk about this real quick. It is highly illegal to do anything to mailboxes even for locksmiths. If the key has do not duplicate, USPS do not duplicate on it as this key does. Right there, if you see that on your key, you cannot do anything to it or with it unless you are working directly for the postal service, which we do do that here, but you do have to be providing the service to the actual post office. Most of the time they handle their own uh, as far as these go, but every so often they do utilize the services of outside contracted outside locksmiths, such as us. But it, these are also found on a lot of apartment style or like condo apartment, um, condo cluster mailboxes as are these. And these are a little bit different in that they, instead of just using a clip to hold on the back with the nut and the cam, the cam is actually screwed onto the back of the plug. And the, see these two holes right here and right here. This would be, basically you would see this sticking out of the face of the mailbox. I'm just using a wood sample here instead of a bigger lock like that. So the face of it's gonna be pretty small. You might see Compex on there, you might not see anything. Compex just started producing these, I say just, but like 10 years ago when they, when they were able to, they came with keys that said, do not duplicate. And, uh, for, and they came with those keys for about a year. So we were selling these locks and we were unable to do anything with them. However, uh, after they put them out for about a year or so, they remove those markings and they just say compact. So these are Y2, which is a six pin Y1 key. That's all it is. And it looks like uh, most Y2s are six pin, but once we get in here and take a look at this, we will see it's actually five pin. Look at the pretty radical bidding and also that is why you'll see most of these keys with a really high shoulder. If you look at this compared to this, you'll be like, whoa, that is a crazy max. However, this is a no cut. And actually what that does is provide quite a bit of drill resistance because there is no cut between here. So you're going to have to go through a considerably thicker piece of metal if you were to try to have to drill that out for whatever reason. Now, if you're a homeowner or a condo owner, the best way to do this really is to meet up with the post office person or the management for your condo. And when the post office lady opens the cluster, when, when the post office is there, they, they open the whole thing, not individual boxes. And once they open the whole thing, you will see this. Instead of trying to unscrew it, because if you don't have a key for it, getting to this screw is really, really hard to do. So, you know, not all postal people are the same. They may have an issue do you, with you doing it. I don't know your particular circumstance, but if you're not a locksmith and you're trying to DIY this, you can purchase the 9300 lock and replace it yourself. You just obviously have to figure out how to get your box open. So while she's there, most of the time they're a little bit impatient have a uh, number one Phillips screwdriver. That's all you need. That's a little smaller Phillips screwdriver. And you know, when she's there, you can be like, hey, I'm a new tenant. You may have to get with the management to meet with her while she's there delivering mail. 
Um, and just tell them you need to unscrew the cam on that so that you can open your box up. Again, I don't know how they're going to handle this. Some will be like, oh, yeah, no problem. Some will be like, no, you have to do so-and-so. So whatever the case is, if you're able to, the quickest, easiest thing to do is while she's there is just grab your screwdriver and unscrew the two screws holding the cam on the back of the lock. Very easy to do. And once you get that off, you can be like, okay, thank you. That's all I need. And then after she gets done, you can come back and deal with it later because you don't want to tie her up for a long time while you're trying to screw around putting this lock in. Because once you get this cam off the back, make sure and don't lose your screws just in case. These do come with this cam. However, some cams may be formed slightly different, but the lock bodies are practically all the same. So make sure you hold onto the cam and the screws. Let her get done putting the mail up. Come back. You can just open your box now because there's nothing. This is what holds the box door closed. Um, and uh, just order you a new one. We sell these. If you need a lock like this, just let us know through our email at selockandkey at gmail.com. However, for the locksmiths, we're going to go ahead and take this apart. So presumably you don't have a key for it. So we're going to take our Y2. Now, if the Y2 doesn't go in, that means it is one of the older uh, keys that is restricted through the post office that you cannot copy, you cannot cut and provide for the customer. So you just need to replace the lock if you're a locksmith. But we're just going to try to shim this. See how it does shimming and then take a look at it. And then we're gonna see if it will key up to just a standard cut Y2, which I did not grab one of those before I started this video, but I'll just pause. Oh yeah, here they are right here. What is this? Y, yeah, yeah, Y2, here we go. Let's see, if I, let's see if I can do this all in one take, y'all. No, 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 stay up there. No, 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 don't fall. Okay. Let's just see if we can key it up to this Y2 right here. And we're gonna finish shimming it. And we're also gonna take a look at the pins, kind of everything about it. It's a standard lock, we'll come apart, you know, standard plug follower, 4.95. And look at that, there we go, five pins, guys. Six pin key, super thick. If you were a locksmith and you were having to forcibly open this because of a lost key situation, uh, good luck because you got a lot of you got a lot of drilling to do and we see if we take one of these pins and let it poke up look at the chamfer on that pin we'll flip it upside down i don't have a nice little pin and tray here to show y'all but these look actually look like standard yale pins almost i'm not sure i'd have to look at it but anyway that really doesn't matter because we're rekeying it and uh let's just try this key so um even though this key is cut you know in the first position that really doesn't matter maybe for the strength of the key but no telling i'm going to dump these pins out carefully because this is actually still a good lock nothing wrong with it and uh we will see i'm going to look down in there it looks like all the spacing is all the same so we have a four we're ignoring four so 88727, that is 8333. That is a big old whopping pin right here. Oh, look, I'm out of them. So we'll just say 330. Oh, now let's go higher. Let's go 336, especially with that first one. So 88727, 8, 8, 7. Ah, get out of there. 727 That last seven is a little shallow. Let's we'll see what it does. Oh, and also when you have the key. Well, shoot. When you have the key in there, you do have to uh, use a hollow plug follower. So we lost the spring in the top pin. Let's just go ahead and put another one in there. Um, speaking of top pins, I'm going to look in here. I'm not going to really take them out and show you, but there are no, no security pins in here, y'all. It is all just standard, standard pins there. No, no real security. 
The real security in mailboxes is that it's a federal crime to do something to a mailbox that you are not allowed or not in possession of. It's a little catchy, so you know I would just ignore the ignore the markings here. And if I actually had a 318 or even a 321, I'd probably drop it in there. We can go ahead and go all the way up. Pretty good amount of difference there when I can skip that high. Let's see if let's see if it's not as catchy. Not as catchy. So there you go, guys. You can rekey these to any Y2 key. Again, if the original key or if the lock still a little catchy so if i was putting this back in use i would dump these 336s and jump it up to maybe 324 so maybe not exactly standard standard yale maybe it's a little bit deeper yeah that works much better um but just so you know if you run up on one of these and the y2 or a y1 key if you all you have with you is a y1 or uh, I don't really recommend it, but you would have to drop that last pin because five pin would not reach all the way. You could cut the shoulder back. That's maybe what some people could do. But otherwise, that is it on these 9300s. Remember, always, you have to have permission just because somebody says it is their mailbox does not necessarily mean it is so you need to be very cautious with dealing with mailboxes to verify that the person is actually the owner it's like if you're doing it for somebody that has a condo you're going to have to get a letter from the management or you know authorization through them and of course if the key or the lock or you see the words usps do not then do not and that's for real because they don't play around and uh it's not something not there's no job worth getting in trouble over mailbox locks for somebody so yes be very cautious with that but otherwise that is the c9300 oh that's the wrong key that's that's the other one uh it comes with three keys so that is good because you can put one up and you have, you know, two people living in one house. Each one can get a key and then you can have a hide a key. And just so you know, obviously, it's only going to turn one way. So you can't turn it to the right. But again, once you got that door open, there should be two. There's probably two flathead screws. A lot of times I see the little flathead screws. And if uh, the, that's another reason to take this cam off. So you can't really access that other screw unless you turn the key or take the cam off. But once you did, there's usually two little tiny machine screws because usually on these, it's not wood. It is a metal door. So there's going to be a little bar, a little bracket thing that these two screwed into. So if you were missing a lock completely from your door and you don't know what it is and you open the door and you see two threaded holes in there, it is almost assuredly this lock and not the regular style of the lock also these use a oval hole bigger and these would have a much smaller hole like so so that is it guys if you have any questions or comments as always leave them in the comment section we'll see y'all next video